Hello everyone and welcome back to Tomorrow's and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video we are going to bring our support missions into Mars orbit, hopefully, and then we will try to get them to our main ship, the St. Louis, and also perhaps land our lander, though that's after everything else gets sorted out. So we'll see if we get to that in this video. First off is the Mars Supply Mission, and it is entering Mars SOI here. And it's periapsis. Well, we can correct that in Mars SOI, so we're just gonna time warp. Once we get in there, we'll hop to it. Okay, so this is the heavier supply mission, and we do need to aero capture. It is 30 tons, which is a lot on this uh, heat shield size. I presume it's still 5 meters. I'm not entirely sure about that. Again, I might have tweaked scaled it up. Uh, so we need to bring the orbit down so it can aero capture. And let's be careful about that. And then it'll have some delta V in order to meet up with our target. Ah, well, I just noticed that even though we have full probe control, we currently have a signal strength of 1%. Um, it's unclear exactly what it's trying to tell me here, because we got a lunar resource scanner there uh, with, uh, with a little red bar. I guess the St. Louis is communicating through the lunar resource scanner instead of direct to a surface base? I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. But... Maybe I'll just use RCS to do this burn just in case, otherwise if I light the engines maybe I won't be able to stop them. I'm expecting that this being very heavy is gonna need to go fairly deep into the atmosphere. So I'm looking at maybe 34 kilo kilometers as our periapsis. Yeah, but I will quick save. We do have a nice gap between this and the other missions, so we can take our time with it. Okay, well that's 34. And maybe our signal strength will get better as we get closer to St. Louis, but it seems like the St. Louis' own line back home is what's red. It's not our line to the St. Louis. So, okay, well, let's, uh, let me just save it. Okay, now we have good comms. We've got other things relaying us. Okay, here comes Mars. Alright, let's get ready here. Is 30, 34 kilometers enough? Well, we don't have comms, but right now it's just going to be on autopilot anyway. Or is 34 kilometers going to be too much? Because we're not going that fast right now, either. Okay, here come the flame effects, and we've got drag. Maybe too much? Yeah, it's got to come straight down. Okay, alright. Maybe I had tweak scaled the heat shield up a bit. It's not really 5 meters or anything like that. I overdid it. It's going straight down. Okay, well, full disclosure, obviously I did quick save and I'm gonna quick load. Supply capture. Okay, reconsidering a bit, um, we really don't need to go so low with the periapsis anyway because we would like to stay higher up so that we find it easier to rendezvous with the St. Louis. And being in a low Mars orbit doesn't do us any good anyway. And I guess maybe 50 kilometers? We'll try for 50 kilometers here. We just want to barely capture. That way we'll be able to change the inclination better. Okay, here we go again. Not that this knows it. It has no memory of the previous attempt. So yeah, if we wanted to do this ideally, we should definitely only capture after we pass periapsis. 
certainly for a loose capture, but even now it's probably going to be tighter than I wanted it to be. But at least we're capturing after periapsis. Still, it's going to be pretty low. Yeah, and we really need, need it to be pretty high up because of the different arrival times of our missions. They have this phasing with respect to each other, so the periapses and apoapses are in the wrong place. And that's easier to deal with if they're really high up instead of like this, so it'll probably have to boost itself up to rendezvous anyway. Not exactly what we wanted, but I'm not going to belabor it. We're not going to redo it now. We have captured, and we will just go with how it's captured this time. We have some time to sort it out. We might as well do that right now. I don't know. I mean, it's not like our mission needs the supplies immediately. Technically, t getting the supplies would just burden it, right? It'll end up having less Delta V because it's carrying more supplies than it needs. So maybe we'll just have it hang out and wait for the other missions to come in. We'll just make sure it's in a stable orbit, and then we'll decide. Maybe it turns out that the St. Louis is not the thing that uses these supplies, so no need to waste an attempt to rendezvous with it right now. Okay, we are in space, and we should get the... Well, we can't get anything out yet. We need to get comms. Now we have comms. Okay, that is one mission safe. We are at 140 kilometers on the periapsis. We will just leave this be for now and let us get to the Xenon stage and see if we can sort that out. Okay, here is our Xenon stage at the entry into Mars SOI. We have entered the SOI. And I expect that it's not going to take too long to do this burn. It's a four day, nine hour burn time it says here, but that's for 16,000 meters per second. And in a pinch we can use the hypergolic engine. So we're going to time warp a little bit. This is all about how much xenon gas we can actually deliver. This was only half full to begin with. Once again, I don't think we need to capture low, so we'll ease that up a bit. Actually, maybe we can finagle something out there. Uh, I mean, it's just all messed up, let's face it, but... Um, just, yeah, it's still quite a long ways away, and that doesn't look good either. All right, we'll just hold off on that. Probably we should just point retrograde, but it's suddenly deciding not to read my throttle. Great. Yeah, it's uh, bringing the periapsis too far up here. Okay, apoapsis is getting nice and high now, but the periapsis is getting low. Gotta watch out. Come out of time warp every now and again to fix that. Okay. Well, we might. Yeah, well, we've captured right there. So that was a good pass with this thing. Not taking too long to capture with the ion engines, I mean. Okay, well, maybe we could have done something right there. Let's uh, shut it off for a sec here. Um, I mean, this doesn't look too far off. What we can do is, like, lift our orbit up. Well, there it looks pretty close. That's in a while, though. Then again, it'll give us some time to manage the hydrogen stage. This doesn't look too bad. We're only doing 56 meters per second up here at Apoapsis. And then we have an encounter there in 32 days, so it's taking a while, but it's not like the mission needs its fuel too quickly. And we've got a, a relative speed of only 111, which is good considering how different our orbits are, but since we're both going very slow at high altitude, it's good. So let me tweak that a little bit, and we'll take that. Of course, it's very sensitive. Okay, I think 14 kilometers is... More than we can really ask for, since there's going to be an ion engine burn anyway. So, 
All right, we will add that alarm for that maneuver. And we will try to intercept the St. Louis there. So let's focus on bringing in the hydrogen stage now and hope it still has hydrogen. Let me jump to it now before it hits the SOI boundary, just in case SOI boundaries tend to apply a whole lot of heat suddenly or something. Always worry about the hydrogen. And... Well, we do have a lot of boil off. It's at one per second right now. That's a lot. It shouldn't be boiling off that fast. I'm gonna go back to the tracking station, go across the boundary and come back and see what happens. I mean, if we lose a quarter of a ton per hour, that's not gonna be great. It's not got that much hydrogen. Okay, now it's going down. See, we crossed the SOI boundary. It was steady at 1.05. Now, now the boil off loss is going down. Let me just see where we're at as far as meeting up with the St. Louis. Oh, once again, we're getting into too tight an orbit. And probably we can get a better deal than the 1,000 meters per second we see there, judging from the other mission. So yeah, it was at like 250 kilograms per hour or something like that, and now it's down to 15, which is probably more like what it was supposed to be. I don't know. I mean, some people say it was it's trying to catch up to where it ought to be, but I don't know about that. Like it's trying to apply the boil off that it sort of missed out on, but comms are actually pretty tenuous at periapsis right now. Well, I guess we have that relay. I don't know if we'll pick it up properly or not. I guess we can see. Oh, it's coming around this way anyway. Oh, we haven't picked it up yet though. Oh, now we have. Okay, well. Alright, and capture burn. Oh, I should have started earlier. Spool up time. Okay, that's about the same orbital period as the other mission. And we'll figure something out. Now, fortunately, our descending node was very close to our apoapsis, so we can sort of nudge it on over there. Okay, well, it costs a little bit more, but we'll actually do this one first, it looks like. It'll get there in nine days, and then we can do the Xenon stage. And let me just fine-tune this, and we'll follow along with it so that we can continue to check that it is reducing its boil-off. On our way out, we'll see how much we boil off. It looks like it'll be like maybe uh, 100 meters per second. So not great. But if you take a look at the depletion rate going down, I'm like... Should we really have had that much depletion to begin with? Even if it was catching up, should we have had that much depletion to begin with? Right? I mean... If right now we're at 0.5 kilograms per hour, should we have been at 250 kilograms per hour at any point for an extended period of time? And it's still going down. And it was less than that around Earth, and Earth is closer to the Sun, so... Yeah. <laughs> I'm miffed. We need some way of dealing with this darn thing. The boil off situation, I mean. Okay, we are now high over Mars. You can see Mars there. And we are going to do the correction to meet up with our target. Okay, looking good so far. 6.5 kilometer closest approach. That's in four days before the Xenon stage needs our attention. So we are proceeding on uh, this very wide pass and maybe we'll be able to deliver some hydrogen, which is nice. I mean, we've got 283 days until the return. So who knows, it might all boil off for all I know. Okay, there's the St. Louis. Technically there are some alongside docking ports here. 
Well, okay, one alongside docking port here. That might be closer to the hydrogen tank. But docking on the front end is more convenient. I'd really like to get a shot with Mars in view, but we're so high above Mars and Mars is in the dark, so... Let's try and get these properly framed here. Well, this didn't end up doing too badly. Yeah, well, set as target. Uh, well, it's not that far. Okay, there we go. Ah, the lack of magnetism. Always disturbing. Okay, so... Let's transfer some fuel. That one's empty. That one's empty. That one's empty. So I can't really tell which one... Well, this one has no MLI layer, so that's definitely wrong. Um, this one has the least wall temp. I guess we'll see whether it's okay or not. Neither of them says boil off loss now. Apparently while connected this one doesn't have boil off loss either. Okay, well this vessel has transferred all the propellant it can into the St. Louis and we're going to trust that there's no sort of magic having it here that prevents boil off. Right now it doesn't say any boil off loss, so that's interesting. But yeah, I'm guessing that that's not because this arrived and controlled things. I'm gonna guess that it's because we've got the big radiator thing, the radiator fan back here maybe. That says cooling 99.97%, so must be doing something. All right, we are just going to deorbit this this bit. Okay, off this goes, and then we'll try to get the xenon fuel in there next. It's still pretty darned heavy. I think it transferred less than this vessel mass into the ship. Basically our dry mass is more than the amount of hydrogen that we were actually able to deliver. Sun, Mars, St. Louis, and this. Okay, this is deorbited though. And we're already too far away from the St. Louis. But that's fine, we don't need to go back to it. Uh, let us jump to the Xenon stage. Okay, so we are doing the correction burn with the hypergolic engine here. With the Xenon tank, so we're reserving the rest of the Xenon for delivery. We have a lot of MHM Mon 3 available, so we might as well use it. I don't think there's much space on the St. Louis to transfer it to. Of course, the missions like the St. Louis should carry enough fuel to begin with, but we seem to be a little bit tight this time. We already calculated it out. And maybe we would be able to get back, assuming that they consume the food, water, and oxygen, and it was lighter like that, but that's probably not a good thing to rely on. Okay, well this was all a pretty touchy business. Yep, closest approach distance is 10 kilometers there. Okay, so let us head on over to the intercept point. And since we are on the hypergolic engine, we should be able to do that maneuver pretty quickly. I've, it really should have already destroyed the hydrogen stage. That thing has a negative periapsis, I don't know why it's still around. Oh well. I mean, it already must have done a whole orbit. I mean, to be honest, this thing could return itself back to Earth as well. So, it might not be a complete waste to keep some Delta V in it. But... Do we really want to do that, or just send another one? It's got ion engines, which are expensive. But then the other vehicle had a nuclear engine, which would be expensive. The hydrogen stage, I mean. Okay, passing by the St. Louis so that we can dock to the opposite end. Okay, approaching to dock.
Okay, we have docked. And I'm transferring xenon gas. And we'll just transfer all of it. And we'll transfer what we can of everything else. Okay, it's practically topped off with xenon gas now, so they should have no problems. Those are MMH NTO tanks, so we can't top those off. That's also MMH NTO. Okay, so that's the best we can do. This still has some delta V left, but I don't know what to do with it. We probably won't deorbit it right now. Well, some relative inclination, some difference in periapsis and apoapsis. Seems fine to me. Okay. So now we have 7,900 altogether, it says. And that should be enough. The transfer to Earth will take, it seems like, 2,600 and then capture 2,000. Now, of course, with ion engines, it's going to take more. And if we were just using the nuclear engines, let's see how much nuclear engine delta V we have. With all the xenon gas still there, about 600. So I don't know if it's going to boil off or not. It's all in here. Right now, there's no boil off. So, yeah. Uh, here, we can see zero there, no boil off. So it looks good. Will it stay good? I don't know. Well, let's take a look at the Maru Q and see what we can do with it. Well, I said Maru Q, but I meant Mini Q. The Maru Q is the larger version. Here is the Mini Q. And I think this probably kind of takes some experimentation uh, with our trajectory to get it to work even, I mean, assuming it does work. And we want to land at a location with resources. So let's just see what we have here. But since it's going to require some experimentation, I think I'll save it for the next time. It looks like, uh, well, we have an 11 hour trajectory right now. So that means it'll take, well, six hours to get there. And that means that we can't really aim for this patch right now. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll have to figure this out because Mars rotates quickly enough that we can't just go like that. And I don't know whether we want to go straight in like this or whether we want to aero break first into a low Mars orbit and then come down. So yeah, there's going to be a bunch of experimentation next time. If it turns out we get to do it on like the first try and it happens to work, uh, we'll move on to the next thing, which will be constructing our new spaceship in Earth orbit, getting it ready to transfer to Mars because, of course, uh, the transfer uh, from Earth to Mars actually happens before the mission will get back. The St. Louis will not get back in time to be refitted and sent out to Mars again immediately, so we need a second ship. Uh, of course, we probably want a second ship anyway, but we'll start building that next time after we do the experimentation with the Mini Q. So, yes. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will see you next time.